Hey everybody and welcome! Thank you so much for checking out this video. Today I'm going to show you how to make a Spill the Beans game all within Seesaw. Students have their entire worksheet and their actual manipulatives all within the Seesaw canvas. They simply start the generator, pause it when they need to, and then they fill out each math problem as they go. Let's check out how to put this together. What I'm going to first do is actually set up the actual random generator. The first thing I'm going to do is start a new Google Slideshow. From here I'm going to go up to File and Page Setup and I'm going to change my page size to be like a square. Now this is 100% optional uh, for what you want to make this look and feel like. I like working with squares because it's easy to have them put into the Seesaw Canvas. Once I have my square, I'm going to show you how I actually make these beans. There are a lot of ways to do this and you can find your own custom way to make it, but what I like to do is choose this curved line and I like to do a few different clicks here and I'll show you. So I click on one corner, go straight down, and I'm gonna create the back curve of the bean here by clicking one, two, three times. From here, I'm gonna make the end curve by just doing one click in the middle and then another click over here. And then I'm gonna bring this back up to the top, click and click and finish with a click at the top and then closing it all up. Now when you use these shapes in Google Slides, once you close in the shape, it allows you to change the color. So what I'm gonna do is actually start by just making this all the same color. Let's do the this little gray that's above um, our little cyan color and get rid of the actual line. So I have one bean. I'm gonna make one more style just because I like them to be a little bit different. So again, I'm gonna click, 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 <laughs> click, and click. So that seems like a lot of clicks, but uh, in all reality, uh, it's it, the whole goal of this is to make a unique shape as you go through it, okay? So I have two different shapes of beans. What I'm going to do is actually duplicate these so I actually have 10 different beans on my canvas. Now, you can make this number of beans be whatever you want. If you wanna work within five, if you wanna work within three, um, it's totally up to what you want your total number of beans to be. Uh, but I'm choosing 10 just because uh, this is usually a good spot for kids to actually start. So with our 10 beans, what I'm gonna first do is kind of move them around, uh, move their angles a little bit, and just kind of get them to look a little bit more random. Um, I'm purposefully staying away from the edges just because sometimes when you put things into Seesaw, um, it can kind of get blocked by what's already in there. And so what I'm doing here is just kind of making sure I stay away from the bottom, I'm staying away from the top right, uh, and trying to keep these beans as close to the middle of the actual canvas as possible um, so that they're, they're still really, really readable when you put them in Seesaw. The last thing I'll do is kind of just resize them a little bit bigger uh, just like this, but again, trying to keep them away from the edges, uh, especially the bottom edge, as much as possible. So before I start to actually color these and do the random part of, of how this actually looks and feels, what I'm going to do is duplicate this four times, okay? And I'll show you why four times here in just a second. So I'm gonna go one, duplicate again, oops, not bookmark, two, three, four. So I have four of the exact same slide here, okay? What I'm going to do is rotate each slide 90 degrees, okay? So I have one slide here, slide number two is gonna go 90 degrees to the right. So I'm gonna grab all the shapes, flip them 90 degrees just like this, and then we're going to just make sure this is nice in the middle, it's really readable for kids, super, super easy, okay? Next one, we're flipping 180 just like this, totally upside down because this one here was 90. And then the final one, we're flipping uh, 270 or 90 degrees to the left, okay? The reason why we wanna do this, uh, you'll see it in a minute, but it creates this really random pattern as I flip through these slides like this that looks like the beans are totally just jumping all over the place, they're going kind of crazy. Uh, it makes it look like the effect of that you're actually shuffling these beans every time. So before I actually start coloring, uh, what I want to do then is take these four and duplicate them for as many times as I want this to rotate because you're gonna go back and color these as you go, but I wanna make sure that I have uh, the correct number of randomness, okay? So I'm gonna highlight all these shapes and duplicate them as I go by just going either Control D or Command D. Let's just make a set of 20 just for uh, example's sake here, okay? So what I'm going to do now is just go through and randomly color beans a uh, specific color. You could do red, you could do orange, you could do brown, doesn't matter. Um, I can highlight multiple shapes like this and do that as well, but I'm just going to go through and do this uh, really quick. All 
All right, so we have all of our beans kind of randomly done. I'm just gonna flip through it so you can see the effect of what this would look like for kids. So you can see that this shuffles, it's really random, it's really crazy. Uh, it's kind of all over the place. I made sure as I did this that I had a variation between every single number. Um, I made sure I did all the numbers one through 10 so that you have everything represented. What I can do is duplicate this whole set now by highlighting everything. Okay, let's highlight it all by going Control A or Command A so I have all the slides. And just duplicate this like five times because I want 100 slides total. Three, four, and five, there we go. And now I'm ready to actually make uh, my video so that I can put this into Seesaw. So I'm gonna go up here to Add-ons, go down to Creator Studio and open this up. So here's Creator Studio. What I'm going to do is change my output to be 500 and change my interval to be 0.1 because I want this to flip super, super fast through the video. I'm going to finalize things by going to Video File MP4 and click Go. So once this video has finished rendering, I'm actually going to click the little download option and I'm gonna leave it down here in Chrome. You'll see it show up right down here as Untitled Presentation. I'm gonna leave it right here because we'll pull it into Seesaw here in just a second. So in Seesaw, I'm gonna actually create a new activity and let's just call this one, Spill the Beans, something really fun, okay? Let me just paste directions here and then I'm gonna go down here to add a template for student responses. I'm gonna go straight into the drawing because what I'm gonna first do is actually drop on a little template that I have. Now you could make this look however you so want, but this is a template that we've used for Spill the Beans in the past. Uh, what's nice about this one is I can still go in and change the background because this is a PNG image so I can make this look super super nice and clean. The final thing I'm going to do is actually drop my actual random generator on the canvas. Now again I told you that we're going to leave this right here uh, in Chrome so that we can just drag and drop it in. If you didn't or if you don't have it here and you accidentally closed it you can still go to the camera and upload your video if you know exactly where it is. But if you have it here in Chrome, I can just drag and drop and it's going to uh, place itself right into the canvas itself. So here is our generator. I made sure that this fit really nice into this little spot and I'm going to lock it in place so that students can't actually move this. Now what students will get is an experience that looks similar to this. They're going to click play, they're going to click pause, and then they're going to mark down the actual problem as they go. Now I tried to be careful and make sure that things could all be seen, but you can see as I look through this that I could have moved up a couple beans a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, I'm just showing you how this could be created on your end as you go. So that's how you build a Spill the Beans game all within Seesaw. Students don't need manipulatives to have fun and enjoy this actual math activity. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope this is helpful for you in your classroom. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching.